Hello, everyone. This is the October meeting of the acquisition SIG. Um, our plan for today is to go over some of the enhancements that are in 20, let's see, 23.11 and 24.05, um, because if you're a Bywater customer, you got upgraded both of those at the same time. Um, so we will start that as soon as Sarah joins us. And she had a meeting right before this. So um, we'll do that. But what I wanted to do um, first was just real quick, um, have everybody introduce themselves because I think there's a few um, new people here. And I wanted to make sure that everybody kind of Part of Koha is building community. And um, one of the ways that we can do that is to, you know, kind of share a little bit about what we do, um, who, we, who we are as uh, in, within our library and some of the things that we do, how long we've been on Koha, the number of years that, um, that we've been doing this. So um, I think just to keep it quick, um, I'm just gonna go in the order that everybody is on my screen and I'll just call out your name. And then if you can, if you have video, that would be great. So we can see your shining face. And then um, we can just kind of introduce, share your name, um, which library or library system that you work at, and then um, your role in that library and how long you've been on Koha or when you plan to um, migrate to Koha. So um, I will start and my name is Rhonda Kuiper. I work at the Round Rock Public Library. I am technical services and collection development manager um, there and here. And we have been on Koha since April of 2016, Does that make eight years. Um, and yeah, so, um, and if you have anything fun that you want to share with the group, please do that as well. Um, Charlie, you're first on my screen. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlie from the County of Slow Public Libraries. I'm the technical services coordinator here. I think we've been with Koha for three-ish years. Okay. It's been a while. <laughs> okay, thank you, Charlie. Um, Monique, also from SLOW. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I am Monique Mata, and I am also with the County of SLOW Public Libraries in San Luis Obispo, California. I'm the Adult Services Coordinator, um, so I, I'm basically in charge of purchasing and collection development for all adult print and digital resources. And um, I've been working in acquisitions since January of this year. Um, we we used to have it kind of more divided up where I did the I did the selection and someone else did the the actual ordering. But now I'm doing that as well since January. And I want to say we we transferred to we migrated to Koha in summer of 22 that's that's my memory anyway but yeah it's and and I definitely feel like I'm still learning about the about the software so I'm uh, happy to be here okay welcome um Barbara you're next hi I'm Barbara Johnson I'm at Bedford Public Library Texas I'm library manager which is technical services collection development systems website budget and we have been on Koha since October 3rd, 2016. Okay. Megan. Hi, I'm Megan Conley. I am with the Washoe County Library System in Reno, Nevada. And um, I am the uh, our children's and young adult selector for materials, digital and print for the Washington County Library System. And we've been on Koha for 
quite some time. Cecil's on this call too. I think she'll be able to speak to exactly how long we've been on co-op, but it's been, it's been a while, but I do the acquisitions, the selection and the acquisitions part of that. So yeah. thanks. All right. Uh, Chip. I'm Chip Halverson. Um, I'm at the Westlake Porter Public Library in near Cleveland, Ohio, and um, I'm system administrator. And we've been on co-op for ten months. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, John. Hi. Um, I'm John Vink. Uh, I'm the assistant director of library and learning services at Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary, predictably in Austin, Texas. And uh, we've been on COA for, I think it'll be nine months next week. All right, great. Um, Chanel. Hi, I'm Chanel Wheeler from the Yavapai Library Network. I'm the systems librarian here at least for the next three weeks. And then Jerry will be taking over for me. He's on this call as well. Um, and we've been on COHA for four months. No, oh, okay, great. Jason. I'm Jason Robb. I'm the Seek and Find Coordinator at the Southeast Kansas Library System in Iowa, Kansas. We're a consortium of 51 libraries, primarily public. We've got two academic, uh, and we're still growing. And uh, we've been on COHA since 2008. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Pink. I'm the Acquisitions, Cataloging, and Collection Development Librarian for um, 36 public libraries in Western New York. It's the Chautauqua Cataraugus Library System. And we've been on COHA since 2018, and it was October, so it's just about six years on the nose. Okay. All right. Welcome. Um, Katrina. Hi, I'm Katrina Gunderson. I work at the Fargo Public Library. Uh, we've been on COHA since 2016, and I am the Technical Services and Acquisitions Librarian. Okay. Um, Bridget. Hi, I'm Bridget Nolan. I'm at Cornish College of the Arts in Seattle, Washington, and we have been on COHA since uh, 2011. Okay, thanks. Sarah, I'm going to skip you because you're going to be the main uh, speaker after this. Um, and then Megan. I already introduced myself. Oh, oh, okay. Um, uh, Monique. Hi, I'm Monique Preeby, and I have been with the uh, Vermont State College's uh, system libraries. In um, We've had five colleges, and we have the community college that's also involved, and I order for two of the libraries, and I also take, um, I'm in charge of the budget, the complete budget for all five and CCV, and I also do uh, serials mm -hmm. and um, for all five colleges. And um, I also work with EBSCO admin to be sure that the serials are correct in, in our catalog. Okay. So, but I've been with the system for 42 years now. Wow, that's great. Um, Holly. Hello, I am Holly McDougall. I'm here at the Round Rock Public Library. Um, I am the acquisition assistant, uh, assistant under Mrs. Uh, Rhonda Kuiper there. Um, and as she said, we've been on COHA since April 2016. Thank you. Um, everybody's moving around as they turn their stuff. So I'm hopefully I'm going to catch everybody. Jerry. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jerry Struver. Um, I am taking on Chanel Wheeler's duties. Um, I transferred from our county ITS department, so this is all very new to me. <laughs> so I will probably have quite a few questions. Uh, good to meet everybody. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank. You. Welcome, Jerry. Um, Sherry, I think you're next. Uh, 
I'm Sherry Waite, and I work at the Marshall Public Library in Pocatello, Idaho, part of the LCEI consortium. I am the technical services supervisor here. We um, migrated to Koha in 2020, right during the pandemic. So it was really fun. <laughs> Sounds like a great time. Okay, um, Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Balistrieri. I'm with the Monterey Public Library in California. I'm the solo technical uh, or acquisitions person in technical services. So I do everything acquisitions, uh, ordering and budget and so forth. Um, we've been on Koha since I've been on board, so probably before, um, and since 2019. Okay. All right. Daphne. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi. Um I don't know why my camera is not working today, so um, apologies for that. I am Daphne Hulhan. I work with Interleaf Technology and we um, provide support to um, all the libraries using, using COA in Ireland and some random countries in Europe. And we've been doing that for almost 20 years now. Okay. All right, great. Um... Christy, have you gone before? Other Christy has not gone. <laughs> okay. I'm Christy Kruger. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm glad to see that there are like a couple Christies and was there and a Chris. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm Christy. I am from Cuyahoga County Public Library in Northeast Ohio. We are. Um, or we went live on Koha in August of 2023, end of August 2023. So we've been live just over a year. And I'm the ILS librarian. Okay. Hilliard. I'm going to remember your first name one of these times. Okay. Do we have? Oh, no chat. I think that's uh, that's Cecil. Oh, okay. Cecil? Oh, did she go already though, right? No. All right. Maybe she's distracted. Um, last name Morrison? Oh, okay. She says she's got problems unmuting. Oh, hey there. Uh, this is Callie Morrison. Can oh. you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm the new technical services librarian here at uh, Cornish College for the Arts with um, Bridget Nowlin. So we've been um, on COHA since 2011. Okay. All right. And Noah. Hello. Um, I'm Noah Brubaker. I'm the associate director for PALNI, the private academic library network of Indiana. Um, we're evaluating COHA for our, for our consortium. So just drop in here. Okay. Glad to have you. Thank you. All right. Um, so some of these names and faces hopefully are getting to be more familiar with everybody. Um, and uh, today, the plan for our meeting is we have invited Sarah, who got the invitation this morning. <laughs> so grace to Sarah. Um, but uh, yeah, Holly was planning on joining us right up until she lost her voice yesterday. Sarah has graciously um, agreed to step in for her and kind of share, uh, take us through some of the updates and things for uh, 20, 2405, 23, oh, uh, or 11. Um, so Sarah, I, I think what Holly was thinking about was just kind of walking through all of, you know, some of the changes and stuff. Is that kind of your plan as well? Okay. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We've got uh, some, it's not, not every single change, but some of the some of the more notable ones. Um, and uh, depending on how time goes, also have some bugs to look out for that uh, you may have may have already seen, uh, but just to, to be aware of. Um, some of them are are already fixed in an upcoming point release, um, but just to make you aware. Um, should I go ahead and get started? Or yeah, so um, this is 
is Brown, right? Sarah Brown? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is Sarah Brown from Bywater. Uh, she's one of the educators. And yeah, take it away, Sarah. Okay, great. Uh, so yes, thank you for your, um, as as you said, grace and understanding with, uh, I know Holly was ready to jump in, but that's, it's that time of year, I suppose. So um, I will, um, I've got, you know, her, the notes and examples that she had set up. Um, if there are, I can always um, send any kind of follow-up information if there are things that we're not able to get to today. All right. So got my multiple screens here. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is the ability, um, let me check here. Um, so it's adding the ability to cancel order lines in closed baskets. So share my screen. Okay. Showing up, the screen showing up for everybody? Yep. yep. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, so as you can see, basket is closed. Um, and instead of having to um, reopen or cancel from um, the uh, receiving page, we can now get our link here. We can cancel. Select a reason if needed. Um, and um, yeah, but that one's that one's pretty straightforward. Um, you do need uh, staff will need, so I'm using uh, an account with a super librarian permission. Um, you will need the um, manage baskets and order lines permission to be able to do this. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, and then there's uh, the system preference for this is cancel orders in closed baskets. Um, so that's a new one. So you'll need to flip that if you want to use this, use this one. Next one we got. Great chat here. All right. So our next one is. Um, you can now modify an order line to increase the quantity um, instead of having to create a whole new order. So this one has been, I'm a fan of this one. Um, all right, so um, from here, so previously you could, click on this modify um, link, but you couldn't actually modify the quantity. Um, it would not, you, know, you could modify other things here, but you weren't able to do that. Um, if I want to change this from one to something else, I can now say that I want to add multiple items. Let's see, okay. Oh, goodness. I also, I apologize. Since I'm hopping right from another meeting, um, Holly set these all up and I didn't have, um, haven't had a chance to like look through them uh, directly before. So, all right. So we've got that. Um, and so since the one that I was adding had the same um, item information, so it had the same item type and collection code and um, home and holding library, it it updated the existing quantity um, and it, it just gives it that same price. Um, if you do need to add an item that has uh, different item information, like if it's going to a different library or if you've got different item types, depending on how your system is set up, um, that will need to be added just as a separate order line, but this way you can just increase that quantity there. So now back in our basket, we can see we've got our two. And that one doesn't have any um, system preferences or anything associated with it. All right. 
our next is the ability to um, delete canceled order lines um, instead of just having a canceled order line that kind of sits sits there indefinitely forever. Um, this is another one that requires the manage baskets and order lines permission. Um, so just being aware of that. Grab basket for this one. So for this, um, the basket does have to be open. So that is one thing to keep in mind there. Um, but if I want to cancel, So actually, let me do this this other way. All right, so I'm going to cancel my order here. Um, and so the the change here is that I've now got that option to delete. So I can. Um, all right, let me check on one thing here. You know what, actually, I'm going to... Hmm, I'm gonna come back to this one in another basket. All right, I'm gonna come back, back to that one. Um, Depending on, um, I I should have selected the cancel and delete at the same time link right there, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to that one in a bit. Excuse me, Sarah. Do you know how that's different from before? Yeah. So essentially, what it would do before here, um, here. I'm just gonna throw something in the basket so that I can. Show this one. If there's anything that might happen. All right, I'm just gonna throw a random thing in here just to get something in. Of course, this one's got multiple things. All right. Um, so before you were allowed to cancel it, but it would still, you would always have that order line showing in the basket um, indefinitely. Oh boy. Okay. Um, let's go back to that basket. Oh, right. Um, this is one where I know, um, I'm not sure that there is an example immediately available for showing you what it used to look like in um, in one of our other sites. Okay, I keep picking ones that I can't actually show what this does. Um, all right, so for this bug, um, what, so if I cancel the order, oops, cancel that. Mm. 
Mm, okay. Um, I keep picking examples where it's not going to let me let me show you the entire process. Um, fix this record up so that I can do this. That one checked out. Um, I'm going to go back to this one. Uh, I'm going to take a moment later on and just stop sharing my screen so that I can set the example up so you don't have to watch me do that. Um, but what it would do before is it would allow you to cancel the order. Um, and even if you deleted the bib, it would show here as deleted bib. It wouldn't show you the title anymore, but it would always show in your basket as like a line, as an order line, um, even though the bib no longer existed. Um, so it wouldn't, uh, it would just kind of be like a ghost sort of order line there indefinitely. Um, but essentially what this does is allow you to cancel and delete so that it doesn't show up here at all. All right, oh, back to that. All right, so our next one is a bug that allows you to, it's um, a new option to see um, about acquisition status that you can see from the bib. So for this one, So here in the bib, um, in my acquisitions details tab, there's this new line here um, that we've got um, this new acquisition status uh, or new line about the acquisition status and um, it is currently in processing. Um, so one thing to keep in mind with this is that this is looking at the status in acquisitions of received or not received. It's not looking at the not for loan status associated with the item. So if you know, you've got your on order or you're in processing status, that might not line up you know, with with what this what this says, since it's really just looking at um, at the like actual status of received or not received in acquisitions. Um, so like this one, for instance, is. Um, It's uh, processing, um, let me see here. So this one should not be received in acquisitions. Yeah, so since this one is not yet received in acquisitions, um, it's got our status of processing. Um, if I've got one that is received in acquisitions um, and it's got you know, this in, proce uh, in processing for loan status, um, because it has been, has been received, it's going to show acquired there. Um, so yeah, the thing to just keep in mind with this one is that it's it's really about received versus not received. It has nothing to do with the not for loan status um, of the actual item. Um, another, thing, another thing to keep in mind with this one is if this order line had four um, items instead of just the one and it was a mix of received and not received, um, it's COA is going to use that processing status. So it might not... Um, it's not that it's inaccurate. It just it's only going to have the one status. So if there's any anything here that is not yet received, this is going to show as processing, even if um, even if there are are some that have been received. Are the statuses um, are they automatic, or can we go in and like create new ones? For example, this is automatic. Yeah, it's really just yep processing. Um, yeah, and I, are you able to see the the uh, the text that's coming up when I'm hovered over? Oh, over yeah, it's um, it's hard to the status unlinked means there's no linked orders canceled, all are canceled. Processing new or uh, active or new order lines, which again is just unreceived, and then acquired is there. Um, everything is received, and anything that is 
uh, if there is anything that was not received, it's been canceled. Um, yeah, canceled order example uh, might be what you were trying to generate, but couldn't. Um, yes, I'll I'll take a, go back to that one. Um, oh, I see. There's a a screenshot coming in the chat. Um, sort of. Um, so the the screenshot in the chat is of a canceled order. Um, it looks like, depending, um, John, I'm not sure what um, what uh, version you're on or what permissions you have, but there would be that delete order link in the delete order column um, or that delete link in the delete oh, order column. This yeah. this one has already been deleted. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to derail oh, you. That's okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah, I'll set that all that up in a moment. All right. Okay. All right. Our next one is one that I'm excited about. It is the ability. There's a new link when um, in your baskets to place a hold. Um. So, so. So it's it's right here. It's pretty self-explanatory. But once something is in your basket, even before the basket is closed, you can place that hold, um, which is nice. You don't have to know. Go out to the bib. Um, the one thing to keep in mind with this is that um, it doesn't automatically. So if I click place hold in the same tab, once I finish placing the hold, Koha is not automatically going to return me to the basket. So for this one, I recommend opening it in a new tab doing your hold. Um, and then refresh there, but um, so you can do that straight from there. Sarah, does the basket have to be open in order to have that feature? Um, I do not believe it does. It does not. I'm looking at one right now on my oh, Sure, yeah. Maybe so. All right. Um, next one is along the same lines. Um, there is now the ability to automatically place holds on patrons um, when are uh, on patrons for patrons um, when purchase orders that you have accepted are added to a, um, added to a basket. Um, so this is also a system preference. It's place holds on orders from suggestions. Um, it is do place a hold when um, when ordering from a suggestion. Um, so it just kind of speeds speeds that all up from you. Um, by default, the system preference is going to be sent set to don't. Um, if you are using purchase suggestions and using the um, accepted or ordered purchase suggestion notices that automatically get sent to patrons um, when um, either you accept an order, uh, a purchase suggestion, or you order it, um, suggests considering uh, updating that language, depending, I know some libraries have language in there, like you are now able to place a hold on this item when it's um, as part of that ordered notice. Um, so consider updating the language to a hold will automatically placed or will automatically be placed uh, for you on this item. But all right, so I'm going to add it to my basket here. And suggestion. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really matter.
All right, so I've got that and now I head out to the bib. Um, we can see that, that that hold is automatically there. So um, that, um, you know, for things that are not purchase suggestions, you've got that that handy link, but if it is a purchase suggestion, it's even faster. You've got that, got that hold right away. Um, and actually, Um, ignore this notice. This is another testing thing. Um, but this would be an example of, you know, if you are sending that purchase suggestion notice, you could have the language say something like this holds will automatically be, be placed for you. Sarah, you kind of went through that quickly. So was all of the, I assume all of the ISBN and the title and the author, that all has to be in there before you add it, or you need to add it before you put it in your basket? Um, you technically to put it in a basket, you don't actually need any of that. I mean, if, if this is something, um, that you're going to be, um, well, if it's, if it's EDI, you're not ordering it directly from the suggestion anyway. Um, it, you, you don't really need any of that technically in your basket, um, whether or not you have that is going to depend on um, if you are, if you're ordering, um, if you're like importing a vendor file or um, or planning to order via EDI. Um, although I would have to test because if you're bringing it in from a vendor file, Koha, because this currently works based on doing it from a suggestion. Um, so if it's coming in from a vendor file, um, that information would need to get added. Like that that part of getting that information into the suggestion would have to happen um, earlier because if I add to the basket from a staged file, it's not going to trigger that same suggestion. It's not gonna like automatically recognize that it's ordering from that suggestion. Um, so that would, they'd have to have to think about the kind of best workflow to get that, that information in there. Is that the, would that be the situation that you're thinking of if you are getting this from a vendor file? With the ISBN? No, no, not necessarily. It's just that a lot of times it's incomplete from a, um, like for a bib record, like they'll, they'll not have the ISBN or, so it seems like when you put it in your catalog that way, you're going to have to kind of fill in the blanks, so to speak, because um, okay. they're often not complete. Sure. So, yes. Um, so once you have um, added it to your basket, that's what creates the actual bib in Koha. So at that point, you can, uh, whatever your catalog and preference is, you can um, go out to Z3950 to pull that information in, or you can edit edit your record here. Um, once you've got it created as, as that order line so that, you know, it is pulling from that suggestion, um, if you do have a file um, that uh, that you want to import and um, and overlay this one that so that it's got that more complete information. Um, but the the key to this part of it working is that you're adding to the basket from that suggestion. Um, and then that is what is going to create this as a bib that you can then modify or whichever way, whichever way works for you to modify. Um, but you you can add it in here without any of those details. Um, Koha will let you do that, and then it's kind of up to you how you prefer to how you prefer to modify from there. Does that does that? Yes, that? thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, the next one. There's not really anything to demonstrate for this next one, um, but. It is that in your mark fields or mark um, mark item fields to order. Show you the system preference. Um, there are some additional options that were not there before. So your new ones here are um, coded location qualifier. Um, 
Enumcron and uh, barcode. So these are now available. They were not available before, but now they are. It's not really not really a whole lot to demonstrate there. Just gives you some more flexibility with um, with importing um, item information. Um, any questions about any of those? Can I'll stop sharing my screen um, and set up um, a quick example for for that one that I need to to fix from earlier. But any any questions on anything here? Um, I have a question. It wasn't. It it just showed up. It popped up on the screen. Um, so. I often, when I'm ordering for a particular fund, I will get that warning notice like you had gotten, like there are not enough funds or they're not, there's not enough money in this fund, but I have plenty of money and I, the way I have it set up is like, oh, warn me at $25 or something. So it seems to be some kind of glitch in Koha that I get that warning when I'm ordering. And I just want to know if that was a bug or if you knew anything about it. Um. I have not seen that one, but that doesn't, I just might not have come across it yet. So, um, yeah, because it occurred when you just did some examples like of adding to the cart. Um, and you may not have any fun, like money in your funds right now. Maybe that's why it warned you. But again, I get it when I have plenty of money and it, then I have to just click through it all the time. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take a look. Um, mm, let me see here. Um, actually, you know what I would say? Uh, if you want to open up a ticket and that's that's the, I'll, I'm going to do some right after this. I'll look around and see if I can find a bug, but that way, um, yeah. Especially because depending on like exactly how you've got things set and everything, I want to make sure I'm looking at the same, same parameters. Um, Ah, and yes, so uh, looks like Monique uh, has in the chat um, an example of what, what I was going to set up and still can, um, but there is now, um, so there's, uh, I've got an example in there of canceled orders with that delete order um, column now showing with a delete link. Um, so that one, um, that demonstrates that bug. Thank you for, for getting that set up while I was going through the rest of these. Um, I have a question about that. Does that delete it from all of Koha? Does it delete the bib record or just from this order line? So this one is there. This one is... Um, so this is meant, it doesn't, the, that delete column, um, is meant to delete the order line once the bib has already been deleted. Um, if you want to leave the bib in Koha, um, really it, the order should just be canceled. Um, you don't need to, there's not really a need to delete the order line. Um, but in order to delete the bib, from the basket in this way, uh, pardon me, in, in order to delete the order line from the basket in this way, um, the bib must also be deleted. Um, so it's, yeah. Right. So Sarah, when I go into one of my former baskets, um, it, when I've deleted, uh, it says I'm um, deleted bibli bibliographic record, but I'll have the title on there and it's under canceled orders in my basket. And you're saying that's no longer gonna show up? That, um, I, I can't see exactly what you're looking at. Um, it, are you saying that the line will not, what is it that you're, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure, so, so I'm looking in a basket. So if I look under one of my vendors, Let's say I have 16 items in a basket and mm -hmm. it'll say um, 
this is the broad, like looking under all the baskets in a vendor and it'll say one canceled. So then I click into that basket. And when I see the canceled, I will actually see the canceled title and it'll say in parentheses under the title name, deleted bibliographic record. So in mm -hmm. other words, I will know that I ordered that or I tried to, but I actually deleted the record. So I'm wondering if that's still going to show up in the basket. That will show up unless you then take this second, this next step of deleting the order line. Um, so, you know, it, it can still show up. Um, but if you, if you want to like clear that kind of, kind of thing out from your basket entirely, um, that's what this system, this, uh, new feature gives you the ability to do. Um, if the basket is already closed, you would need to reopen it in order to delete that order line. Um, but if you, if you want to leave it there so that you've got that record, like you've got not, not record in the sense of bit record. Um, if you've got that like paper trail, more or less, um, like you've got now, you, you can have it, uh, you don't have to take that next step of of deleting the order line. Um, it really just kind of depends on how much of that information you want to show um, in your baskets. Oh. Um, all right. So a couple of bugs to be aware of that you may have come across, but in case. Um, so the first one is there is currently not the ability to cancel, uh, to close more than one invoice or really any number of invoices using these checks, check boxes. Um, when I select multiple and I say close selected invoices, instead of closing them, it's going to one of the invoices. It does not even close the invoice. Um, so unfortunately for the time being, invoices will have to be closed one by one. So again, it is it is a filed bug. It's, I believe it's, um, I would have to check to see if it's one of the ones that they're trying to address in the next point release, but that is that is where it is for the moment. Um, um, let's see. This one. Um, there is a bug with um, updating the manager for purchase suggestions. Is that something that you all use or not really relevant to this crowd? Sorry, I missed that one more time. That's okay. Um, there's a bug. It's uh, updating the manager um, from one particular point in the purchase suggestions module um, is not currently working. Um, but I know that I don't see a ton of libraries use the manager feature in purchase suggestions. So Wanta, is that something that you all would like to see or not really relevant to this crowd? I would like to see it actually. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Please. Yeah, no, no problem at all. All right, so. All right, there it is in the chat. Okay. So the way that it typically works is that you can select your purchase suggestions and then you can um, select update manager. Oh, I need to. Reshare my screen so that you can see that pop up. I was able to see it, I thought. Yeah. Oh, you were able to see the pop up? Yeah. Oh. I saw it. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. So we've got our suggest manager. Uh, 
Um, so do that. You can see it did not update anything. So again, just you can still go in and individually modify them, uh, but right now that, that piece is not going to work. So you can still individually modify them, but not with the check boxes. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you can't can't bulk modify them essentially. Yeah. Um all right, one that has come up that came up a lot last week for whatever reason. Um with fast ad, there are some issues that are being addressed. Um, so, uh, there are, a, there's another one with a similar title, uh, librarians with only fast ad permissions can no longer edit or create fast ad records. Um, there is, uh, here's the other one. The other one is specifically about editing fast ad records. Um, Essentially, library or staff without the edit catalog permission, um, but who do have fast cataloging, um, they should be able to add and edit and delete fast ad records. Um, right now, that is not that is not working properly. Um, this is the fix for this is in um, twenty. 40504. So the next point release, um, that fast ad functionality will be working back to how it used to. Um, but at the moment, it is not. Um, at the moment, it is not. Um, and then there was one with mark fields to order and mark item fields to order. Um, not really anything to demonstrate for this one, um, but uh, mark um, mark fields to order price um, data coming in that way is overriding um, mark item fields to order. Um, this is another one um, that is fixed in twenty four oh five oh four, so it will be will be on your system soon, but you might run into it in the meantime. Um, and then let's, and then one final one, which is, um, so when, um, when trying to edit an item in acquisitions, uh, instead of Koha isn't redirecting to the, the right screen, essentially. Um, grab my sample basket here. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, we can see it here. All right, and so here, if I try to edit, um, you can see it does not bring me to the actual screen where I need to edit, it just redirects to here. Um, so the workaround for this one, of course, would just be receiving it and then afterwards going to the item record. Uh, but it is that extra step of not being able to do it from here in the meantime. Um, let's stop my share and see if there's anything in the chat. Um, any um, 
questions on any of those bugs, anything else anyone has run into um, that we didn't look at? Again, this is not like every every enhancement, um, especially since there's two uh, have two levels that we're doing uh, with this upgrade. But any questions? <laughs> Um, let's say anything that does come up as always, please send us, um, send us a ticket. Um, and again, I appreciate everyone's understanding, um, that I was not, uh, expecting to necessarily be here. So, um, with the sort of some of the Rocky examples that is, that is not on Holly. She had them all set. I just was not able to review them, um, ahead of this meeting. So I do appreciate everyone's understanding with that. Um, I don't know, does this meeting, well, I guess I'm not the host of the meeting. So um, if there aren't any other questions, I will sign off and leave you to the rest of your meeting. But if there is anything, happy to happy to talk about it. Does anyone have any other questions? Looks like we've got lots of thank yous for you, Sarah. Um, and yes, I appreciate your stepping in and um, taking us through some of the major changes that have come with the two releases uh, yeah. that too. have come in. Um, oh, I, I do want to also say, um, I believe the email went out recently. There is going to be another Q&A session um, next week. So we'll be you know, covering some more of our favorite features then. But if you do ha have anything specific that you want to bring there to look at, um, please, we'd love to, to know kind of what features are on all of your minds. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. I hope the rest of your meeting and days go well. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Um, we're pretty much, we have like two minutes left. Um, so what I would like to do is just remind everybody that next month's um, meeting, ooh, is going to be November 19. I think that for the US people, that's the week before Thanksgiving. Um, so uh, yeah, November 19th at the same time. Um, and if you have ideas about topics that we'd like to discuss, you know, um, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see what we can, what I can come up with for um, a topic and let everybody know. Um, I was able to get the note out on Fridays, uh, you know, preparing for this meeting. So um, I'm going to try and do that again in the future, just to remind everybody uh, a little ahead of time. And then, um, you know, if you see that reminder on Friday um, and you think, oh, I stumbled across whatever in in the meantime please uh email me and we can um talk about that whatever you stumbled across um at the meeting so that'll give you a little bit of time to let me know what's going on um any questions um i'm still not believing that we're halfway through october already um it's been a little crazy, but um, if not, I will stop the recording.